<coughs> this morning, we want to look at a title about God. Now, Revelation chapter 17, the God of this world. Now, some say that the God of this world that we're now living in is the devil. Some say that the God of this world is really God. But when we read it, the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, it says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. <coughs> Excuse me. So it is easy to see that the devil does influence people today. But then again, maybe you don't feel that way. Maybe you think, well, you know. Well, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2 the Bible says, Wherein times past you walked according to the course of this world, <coughs> according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. And so and there was a time in all of us's lives that we lived and did things just like all the rest of the world did. We didn't come into this world believing. <laughs> Something had to spark us to want to believe in God. Now it is all too clear that the called out ones of God know what the devil is doing and they know how the God of this world is working only because they have God's Holy Spirit living within them to show them. So what about all the poor souls that don't have the Holy Spirit? See, their minds are blinded by the God of this world. We need to understand that we have this life that we're living in. When it's gone, there's the grave. And we're all going to go there one day. You know, I think we should love one another as much as we can, but in the process of our love, we need to realize that we also need to separate. You know, if a man marries a woman, he loves her, she loves him, supposedly anyway, if they're getting married, and they should kind of be together and not apart with someone else, either one of them. It just seems like the right thing to do, doesn't it? Shouldn't it be the same with if you're called out by God, shouldn't it be the right thing to do? Or, you know, why would you want to go back to the world if you're not of the world? So think about that. You know, it's all too clear that the devil is working in the world. You think about that for a minute. He's working in the world. Why is he working in this world then? All of the spiritual things in this world are not of God. Because we find out that some of these spirits are downright nasty. And some of them are really bad. In 1 John uh, chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, the Bible tells us how we can know some of these different spirits that are in the world. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. So, just because they're standing in a church and it sounds like they're preaching to you about God, well, are they really? Because you're going to find out there's a lot of devils in the churches today. He says, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. See that in verse 1? Because there are many false prophets going out into the world. That could be in the churches, that could be out on the street, that could be anywhere. They're going out into the world, you see. And the way you're going to know them is how. Verse 2, hereby you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses 
that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now what does that mean? Do you believe that Jesus is God? Hmm? Now, a lot of people go to church, but they don't believe Jesus is God. A lot of preachers out there preaching today, they don't believe that Jesus is God. Isn't that what that verse is saying? Jesus has come in the flesh, is of God. Think about it. Every spirit confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Where have you have heard that it should come into the world? And then he says in verse 4, You are of God. You see, you're the called out ones. And you have overcome them. Why? You have the Holy Spirit, and greater is He that is in you than the one that's in the world. And so we can stand up, we can love these people, but we don't have to get down in that ditch with them. Just because you love them, you don't have to get in the ditch with them and get all dirty and nasty like they are. Because the Holy Spirit that is living within you as a call out one of God is greater than the spirit that's in the world. And what do I mean by that? Because that gives you the power to recognize what you're dealing with. It gives you the authority to say no. Devil, you're not doing that to me. I'm not, I'm not going for that lie, <laughs> if you will. As called out by God, we are indwelt. God's Holy Spirit is living within us. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So you see, if all you can think about is fleshly things, <laughs> just think about where you're at. Are you really of God or are you of the world? I mean, that's what the Bible says here, isn't it? And so for to be carnally minded or after the flesh is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because, the car verse 7, the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Now think about that. You're driving down the road and one of the questions on the um, uh, driver's license, when you go to get the driver's license, I remember, it says you're driving down the road and you enter onto the interstate highway system and the speed limit is posted at 55, but everybody is doing about 70. What should you do? To stay with the traffic or lag behind? Now guess how many people would say speed up and do 70 like everybody else is? But you know if you did, you'd get that question wrong because they're supposed to be doing 55. So just because the whole world is doing 70 doesn't mean it gives you the right to do 70 as well. And the same goes if the speed limit is posted 55, it doesn't give you the right to be true to the long at 35. They have laws that says if you have a LSV, a low speed vehicle, one that only does like a neighborhood vehicle that does only 25 miles an hour, you're not permitted on a highway that is even posted at 45 or 35. It can only be in an area that's posted at 25 miles an hour speed zone. And so when you look at that, look at the people in West Virginia. They're either driving way under or way over. <laughs> and why is that? Think about that. Could it be because the carnal mind is enmity against God and then look at the animals that's running out there on the highway. God put a fear upon them animals to keep them away from mankind, to respect us and to, and to know that we have power over them. But then, there they are running out there on the highway getting run over, aren't they? Why? Again, let's read that. To be carnally minded is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. You see there? It's not going to do what God says, no matter what, whether it be animal or man. 
<coughs> this is why God, when He decided the whole world was corrupt, He only chose a certain few animals to get in the ark with Noah. What happened to the rest of the animals? The same thing that happened to all the people because the Bible says all flesh has corrupted itself. You see there? Even the animals have corrupted themselves. Think about that. And then he says in verse 8, So that they that are in the flesh cannot what, Marie? Cannot praise God. There's no way. You come to church all day long and sit here and be on your knees praying all day long. But if you're carnally minded, there's no way you can please God. No. no matter what you do, you can't please God. But verse 9 says, But now, but you are not in the flesh. See? You're called out of God. You're not in the flesh. But in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man does not have the Spirit of Christ in him, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And so you want to do the right thing. And then verse 11 says, if, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells within you. And so there's the whole thing. We have to understand we are different. If you are called out of God, you become different. You're going to know what the God of this world is doing. You're going to know that without a doubt. Now you can turn a blind eye to it if you want. And after a while, you'll be turned a blind eye to God. Because you're getting away from God. And you're causing His Spirit to die off in you then, aren't you? with the way you live in your life and the things that you're doing. The unsaved man does not know God. Turn with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The unsaved man does not know God because he does not have God's Spirit within him. And so how could he know how could he know the real God or the fake God then? How's he going to know who's really God and who's not God? Look at all the different religions we have in the world today. From Buddha to Islam to... Lord only knows what other names they've come up with. Are they all of God? Well, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man is coming to God the Father but by me. And so, Buddha's not going by the way of Jesus. Muhammad's not going by the way of Jesus. So how can they be going to our God and how could they have our God's Spirit living within them? Think about that. Because there's a problem going on in this world and isn't there? A lot of people are going through the motions <laughs> but that's it. That's the motions. You know? In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 read verse 14 Marie. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So if you don't have God's Holy Spirit living inside of you, and He hasn't quickened your spirit, according to the Bible, if we read that verse again, He even considers the things of God to be foolishness. Oh, that's just foolishness. Isn't that what it says there in the Bible? Yeah. Does it? Look at the way some people laugh when you talk about the Word of God to them. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's the way they'll do it. A lot of people are that way today. There, it's foolishness to them. So ask yourself, how do we know what the devil even looks like? That's a good question, isn't it? How do you know what the devil even looks like? So how do you know if you're doing with the real God? You don't know what God looks like either, do you? And so some people say that God is love. 
but they leave out the part that he is also just and holy. They just look at the one thing, one attribute of God, love. But in 2 Corinthians, in chapter 11, the Bible gives us a, a way that we can know what the devil's up to. And if he's trying to do something, uh, fool us. Verse 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So they're transforming themselves. You see that? It's not that God's Holy Spirit is transforming them, but they're doing it by themselves. Verse 14, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an, as an angel of light. And so you see, he thinks he's a Christian. Yeah, the devil thinks he's a Christian. He transforms himself into as an angel of light. Therefore, verse 15 says, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. But what's going to be the end of it? Whose end shall be according to their works, you see? It's time that somebody's got to dance and then somebody's got to pay for all the music. Huh? No matter what you do in this world, there's an ending. We have a beginning the day we were born, we live our lives, and we have an end, the day we're going to die. And it's going to be the same here. When you see a very angry person, and you see how they act, how they live their lives, and what they do in, in their whole life, the Bible says have nothing to do with an angry man. But you can see, when you see an angry man, what you're looking at. You can discern what this person is by what this individual is doing, can't you? Okay? According to the same word of God, the devil and all of his people are going to suffer the vengeance of God with their lives and all their trickery when it's exposed. But as we look at this, you're going to know that it's not of God. How could they be living of God and doing what they're doing? Now a person doesn't mean a person because he gets angry is going to hell. Anger is a natural human emotion. Just like sorrow or happiness. It's a natural human emotion. Jesus got angry and overturned the tables at the temple. He got angry and cursed the fig tree if you will. And so, if it's a sin for you to be angry, then Jesus sinned. And the Bible says He never sinned. So anger is not a sin, it's what you do with that anger. The Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. That's what the key to it is. People are giving the devil a place in their life and a place of Eminence, a place that he shouldn't be having. A place that he can rule and reign with all of his ways in you. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 14, it says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God's going to bring it into judgment, whatever it is that we do. In uh, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And so, you can be angry and sin not, you see, because that's a natural emotion. And so, but those who are called out by God are going to recognize the devil. How? Well, they're going to see him with his counterfeit appearances. By how? If he's trying to get you to do something 
that goes contrary to the Word of God. Now the Bible says for us to obey every ordinance of man in the book of Peter. He tells us to obey every ordinance of man because this is right in God's eyes. So if you pull onto the highway and everybody's running 70 miles an hour and it's marked 55 miles an hour and it's a speed zone, do you know what's happening there? Think about it for a second. How long does it take you to be a Christian before you understand if you break man's laws, you're breaking God's law? See there? Most people don't realize that. If you don't pay your taxes, you're breaking God's law. Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And give unto God what belongs to God. And so, how many people today even realize what they're really doing? You have God's Holy Spirit living in you. And you have a, a certain apprehension when evil comes at you. And you know, oh boy. Yeah, I don't want to pay that much in taxes, but I don't want to go to jail either. That's what's going through your mind. I don't want them coming after me and doing this and that and the other to me. And so, what is that? Well, a lot of people it's just the fear of the authorities. But as a Christian, it's the Holy Spirit talking to you. You know you want to do what God wants you to do. You want to do the right thing. Think about it now. The devil transforms himself into an angel of light. He tries to look like he's a good guy from God. But he's using his identity. No, he's using his disguise to hide his identity, isn't he? You'll see. Well, I'm a good guy. I'm just running 70 miles an hour in this 55 miles on because I can. Why? Watch them all slow down. You see a police sitting alongside the road. Yeah. <laughs> Watch them all. All them brake lights come on. What in the world are they slowing down for? And then you get up a little further, there's a police sitting there. So they knew they was doing wrong to begin with. Right. And that police is saying, mm hmm. Let's see who I'm going to pull over next. Well, so then they're going to take part of their God away from them. Money. You see, they don't want to part with their money, God, so they slow down. <laughs> Those who are called out by God will recognize the devil and all of his counterfeit appearances. And they're going to see that he is trying to get them to go against the Word of God. When that happens... You should know who you're dealing with as a child of God. You should know without a doubt. If all these people are breaking the law, that you know they should be breaking the law, and you're right there along with them, what makes you any different? If, 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 if the whole world is cheating on their taxes, and you do too, what makes you different from the world? If the whole world is putting up a Christmas tree, and, and going to Walmart, and overextending themselves every year, on them pagan idols, what makes you any different if you're doing it? There's a Holy Spirit in you that's saying, hmm, you better not be doing this, and yet you go and do it anyway. Why is that? Because the God of this world has blinded the minds. Your mind ain't blinded, child of God. You know what you're doing. And the Bible says that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Romans chapter 1. What's going to happen to you when you continue to break God's law when you know to do the right thing? As a child of God, your heart is going to darken. Think about that. The devil transforms himself as an angel of light. That doesn't mean he is an angel of light. He tries to make himself look like he's a good guy. But a called out one of God should recognize this easily. Now the devil's in control of all the religions that's in the world today. 
And he is leading billions and billions of blinded souls right to hell with him. The Bible tells us we need to put our trust in God and his mediator between God and man. And that is the man Christ Jesus. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The devil is not a mediator. <laughs> if he is going against, it doesn't matter what, if, if they're breaking God's law, he's going against God. It doesn't matter what he says, how he comes up with, if he's breaking any of God's commandments, he's a deceiver. It's just that simple. He is a deceiver, or he has been deceived and become a deceiver as well. The devil professes to be a Christian, just like his ministers. And he does this in order to deceive his victims. Now, <laughs> why would he want to deceive you? He wants you to go to hell, that's why. He don't want you going to God's heaven. He wants you to join with him in hell. Not because he likes you. Because he just wants to take away from God. The devil appears in his true form. No, if he appeared in his true form, then you would know what he was. So he doesn't appear in his true form. Because he would be exposed for the person he was. Jesus said this about him in John chapter 8 and verse 44. This is what Jesus had to say about the devil. He says, You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Verse 45 says, And because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. Why? Why don't you want to believe what I'm telling you this morning? The new world order that the God of this evil world is using has a plan right now for a one world government. And that one world government is going to be none other than the beast system of the coming Antichrist. And this coming Antichrist is going to have a counterfeit Messiah. Now we read in Revelation chapter 17, which came with the title of this message, And here is the mind that hath wisdom. Now you think about that. Do you have wisdom this morning? The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. There are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is yet not yet to come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was. Now listen to this. This makes, you've got to get in deep to understand this one. And the beast that was, and is not. And he is the eighth and is of the seven, and goes into perdition. The ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Now see, the devil is not only in control of the worldly churches today, <coughs> Because they're not of God. But that is where he lives. <laughs> you ain't going to like this at all, worldly churches. Because the devil lives in your churches today. That's his home. Your church is his home. Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. I'll prove it to you. The Bible proclaims it. He that hath an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the churches, He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death, 
And the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things saith he which has the sharp sword with two edges. I know your works, where you live, where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr who was among you, where Satan dwelleth. <coughs> so where does Satan live? In the churches. In today's worldly churches, that's where the devil lives. He says to the angel of the church of Pergamos, right where Satan dwelleth. Now that should be enough to tell you that the devil has corrupted the church and he has corrupted that church's word of God. Now Jesus said, yeah, they believe in God. They have a, they have a faith. He says, you haven't denied the faith. But you got the devil living there. <laughs> How can you have God and the devil at the same time? Think about that. If you're a worldly churchgoer, you're breaking God's commandments, for one. You're not keeping God's Sabbath. That's just for starters. And where does that leave you, not keeping God's Sabbath? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. And what did he say? It's foolishness to you, isn't it, to keep the Sabbath? We're living in another day, in another time. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Read it, Marie. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Jesus himself said in John chapter 10, and verse 1, <coughs> Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. What does that tell you? How does that say? Don't keep God's commandments. Go ahead and have church any day of the week you want to have it. Do whatever you want to do. Does that fit along with that verse there? He's climbing up some other way. Verse 10 says, A thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I'm come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. You're not going to have life without God. You're not going to have God's Holy Spirit without God. What you are going to have is the God of this world. And the God of this world has got a lot of people's minds blinded that they can't see what they're doing. And they call them false apostles and, and such. You know, the new world order that the God of this world is using in His plan for a one world government is going to be none other than the Antichrist beast system. We need to realize that. And when you realize that, <clears throat> and you realize that the devil is in the churches today. You know, he's got all the churches together. And what has he got the churches all together for? To break God's commandments. And so and this is how you're going to know it. Isn't it what uh, First John was telling us? How you going to know this spirit of Antichrist? He's going to get you to break God's word. Whatever God's word has to say, do that and do whatever you want to do. See? So you have break God's commandments, told them that they're under grace and they're not under the law. And so they can have a better understanding with their different denominations. But it's all aimed at beast unity. You see, Revelation 17, verse 13 says, These have one mind and shall give their strength and power unto the beast. You see, they have one. They don't have God's mind. They have one mind, their own. Just like the devil, he transforms himself 
Just like his false apostles, they transformed themselves. God has not worked in these people. And if you're following after them, you're following after the God of this world. That's <laughs> who so you're following after. If you're looking for a one world church to come, you might as well quit looking, for it's already here. All is left now is for a one world government. And that's 99.99% .99 already done. We got less than 1% before the beast takes power. Totally. You're not going to find a one world church like you've seen in some of these Hollywood movies. The one world church is already here. Every denomination out there is agreeing on unsound doctrine. They're all agreeing for one to go to church on Sunday. That's unsound doctrine. That's not biblical. They're all agreeing for them, their Santa Claus and their Easter Bunny. That's unsound doctrine. That's not biblical. None of that is according to the Word of God. And they are all in agreement with it. That manger scene is a lie. It says in Matthew chapter 2 that when the wise men came, they came into the house. They didn't come into a manger. It says they came into the house. Read it yourself. So this was about two years after the Christ child had been born. Because in Luke, it says the Christ was born. And the, uh, the shepherds in the field and the angels came to the manger. It says nothing about the wise men. So that whole scene that you got by these fake churches out there seeing with their manger scene out there is a lie. And what else are they lying to you about? As a child of God, as a call out of God, we have to discern between the good of God and the evil that the devil is trying to transpose upon us. And so if you're looking for that one world church to come, it's already here. It's here right now. They're all agreeing on unsound doctrine. And right now the Methodist church for one, first off a few years back they was fighting amongst themselves and had a split because of the women preachers. Now they had another, another split or women pastors. Now they've had another split because of the homosexual pastors. And part of that church is going to continue on doing just like they've been doing. And the ones that break off, are they going to be any better? Because they're still having their church on Sunday, aren't they? Still doing what the devil tells them to do. God help them. Though they think they're breaking off, on the one hand keeping part of God's law, but on the other hand they're breaking the other part. The major part. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. How can they love God and not keep His commandments? There's a liar amongst them. And the truth is not in them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, you know, people are calling for unity. But as I said in the message last week, how can there be unity when God's Word calls us to separate? 2 Corinthians 6, 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean, unclean thing, and I will receive you. Satan claims to be a Christian because he lives in the churches with the hordes of demons and his evangelists, and they have changed themselves to look like ministers of righteousness. And that's what we're seeing in the world today. We're not seeing the church that Jesus says, I will build my church on, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell have prevailed against these worldly churches. How else would they have homosexual preachers? How else would they have women preachers? How else would everything they do go against the Word of God? I'm not against the homosexual. I'm not against women who are preachers. I'm against the sin that they're creating by doing what they're doing. 
I still love these people. I still do not want to see these people go to hell because of their sin. There are many false prophets today that try to make the word of God of none effect. Jesus said in Mark chapter 7 and verse 13, He says, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things that you do. So Jesus said that what was going to happen is happening now. Again, we see prophecy over and over. The King James Bible today is our final authority. Unless you have learned to read the, the old Greek or Aramaic languages, then we have the Word of God in the King James Bible, which was translated in 1611. But the devil has deceived billions of people today with false religion and false Bibles. And they just tell you that forget everything else because God is love. They say, let us lay aside our doctrinal differences and focus on loving and helping one another as Jesus taught us. But then the gospel is perverted because people are not converted. When my youngest son first got married, him and his wife were heavily into the Nazarene church. But I don't know what happened to their into the heavily into the Nazarene church there in Payton City, for a fact. Because shortly after they went to Alaska and came back from Alaska, they separated and got a divorce. If they were in the church and the church was doing the job of the church, how could this happen? As a father, I can't... My son is over 18 years old. He has a right to do what he wants to do. I can't make him do anything. He came back from Afghanistan with PTSD. I tried to get him not to go in the service because I came back with it myself. And I had struggled with it for many years myself. But you know, people have a mind to do what they want to do. But if the Nazarene church had been teaching sound doctrine all along, how is it that he got away from it so quickly and decided, oh, I don't want to have this woman for my wife? And now, he's had several other wives since that one. And the woman that he's living with now is not his wife. And they've got a child. And he's so angry with me and calls me a hypocrite and his mother. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I know I'm not perfect. And I know I've made a lot of mistakes in this life. But I have tried my best to do the right thing. Through all the mistakes I've made, I, I understand I'm not the perfect example of fatherhood, that's for sure. Because I'm nothing like my father in heaven. I understand that. But why don't people understand that we're human and we do make mistakes? Why don't people see where our heart is at then? Why can't people see our love, compassion. Why can't people see we hurt just like they hurt? Why can't they see we have feelings just like they have feelings? But yet, the only thing I can see, they don't have God's Holy Spirit. Because without God's Holy Spirit, you cannot feel. The Bible says Jesus bore our infirmaries. You know, He bore our sicknesses. He took our sicknesses and, and diseases upon Himself. And He healed them everywhere He went. In John chapter 1 and verse 4, the Bible says, in, in, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And verse 5 says, And the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness didn't understand it. 
it did not comprehend what this light was. And just as it has always been, the true light continues to shine. Oh, you're a hypocrite! Because the darkness does not understand the true light. And they do not understand nor do they know because they hung him on a cross. In John chapter 3 and verse 19, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. Because their deeds were evil. And verse 36 says there's something that comes along with their evil deeds. And it's not what you might think. It says, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. I can tell you I've done some awful things in this life. And if we didn't have Jesus, I'd be, I'd be in bad shape right now. Uh, what would we do without Jesus? He came and paid a price that we could, there's no way we could pay. And we can't go back and change anything that we've ever done. So if you look at it like that, we go to church and we're thanking God for forgiveness. And until you tasted God's forgiveness, you don't understand it. You have to, you have to be forgiven to understand God's forgiveness. And until you understand His forgiveness, you see in people, oh, I see how you was before and how you're doing and all that. And now you claim this and you claim that. You're a hypocrite. They don't see God's forgiveness. They're blinded by the God of this world. Their minds are blinded by the God of this world. The Word of God is light. We hear people in these movies, some of them talk about these headed towards this light. And some of the psychics talk about a light. But the Bible warns of a counterfeit true light. The Word of God is the light. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh, as the Bible says. And His Word should be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, as Psalms 119, verse 105 says, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, but people are heading towards a fake light and not a real light. The God of this world has a fake light shining. In 2 Corinthians, again, chapter 4, verse 4, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds, not their eyes, their minds, of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see, God is forgiveness, and God is love. But God is also just, and He is also holy. And God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if He gave us Ten Commandments, He didn't go back and say, well, disregard the Ten. You don't have to do them no more. You're under grace now. You're not under the law. We need to wake up, church. And people that are in these churches today need to confront their pastors. Why aren't they doing the job? Why are they trying to tell you something that's not in the Word of God? Every person who teaches, and they do a lot of this, just ask Jesus into your heart today. They claim to believe in salvation wholly by grace. Just ask Jesus to come into your heart and you'll be saved. They believe that salvation is a free gift of God and they believe and teach, some of them won't do anyway, that uh, no works are required for salvation. 
And yet, we need to bring this into consideration today because many of what they teach are half-truths. They're teaching deceitful things because they add, even though they say this, there is no works or whatever, and they can be saved by just simply asking Jesus to come into their heart. But they add things that you have to do. The Catholic Church says you have to do the seven sacraments in order to be saved. The seven-day Advent say you have to be baptized into their church in order to be saved. The Church of Christ says you have to be baptized in order to be saved. And so the list just goes on and on and on. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 16 and verse 30, you know, when these men were in prison and <laughs> they seen, <coughs> excuse me, they seen God really working and they wondered, Sir, what must I do to be saved? That's what their question was. And the question that people are having today out there then, well, if I don't ask Jesus into my heart, what can I do to be saved? And the Bible gives a clear answer in the next verse. Read it, please. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thou house. So you see, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You ask Jesus, and oh, Jesus has got to come down from heaven and go into your heart so you can be saved? Who are you to give God orders when God tells us plainly what you need to do to be saved? And then he tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God... Now where does this every eye closed and every head bowed come to? And nobody looking around. Have you heard some pastors say that? Yeah. Where do you get this from then? Because the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, now how you, you got your head bowed, nobody looking around, nobody saying nothing, quiet as a mouse in there. How can you do what the Bible says to do then? They're going totally against the Word of God. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Not every head bowed, not every eye closed, not no one looking around. Why? Verse 10, read it please. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so how is that possible what they're teaching in their churches? You need to stand up and say, I just asked Jesus into my heart. No. <laughs> You need to stand up and say, I just believe that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I am trusting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you stand up and say, I just asked Jesus into my heart, you just said blasphemy. Think about that. Why would they teach that stuff like that? Just as there was no wise men, as I said, at the birth of Jesus. That whole scenario is a lie. We see that in the Bible. And almost two years later, in Matthew 2, in verse 11, they came into the house. Not the manger. They came into the house. Matthew chapter 2, read it please. Verse 11. Okay. So why yeah, would... Go ahead. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. That's where they get the three wise men from. It doesn't say how many wise men there were. And it says they came into the house and they seen the young child. It was no more a babe in the manger. That is an absolute lie they are out there propagating in God's Word. And if they lied about that, what else are they lying to you about? Just to get you to come into their churches. They're liars. And there's no truth in them. 
They are of their father, the devil, and they're lying because he's the father of lies. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. You don't have to do anything to be saved, but once you are saved, there's plenty of things that's going to change in your life because now God's Holy Spirit is going to live within you. And God's Holy Spirit is going to tell you to pay your taxes. God's Holy Spirit is going to tell you, oh, you better not be speeding out here because you're breaking man's law, you're breaking God's law. You better not be stealing. Now, we went to Amish country one time, and I happened to notice this woman filling her purse up with stuff while we walked around in one of them Amish stores up there where we went. And there she was, coming to our church and up there shoplifting to beat the band. Where is Christ in their heart? How can the Spirit of God be in your heart and you want to be out there doing such? He says for Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. Don't you understand? You can't save yourself. You have to give in to God and let God's Holy Spirit come into you and God will change you. He'll make you where you're not a thief or an adulterer or whatever anymore. Acts chapter 10, verse 43, To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. As one call of God, you will shine. Your light will shine where the whole world will know that you are not the same. They're going to even call you a hypocrite. And when somebody calls you a hypocrite, you should thank them. Because your light is shining. But don't be a hypocrite anyway. <laughs> Try to do the right thing anyway. Even if you can't always be right, try to do the right thing. John chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of this world. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, because He cares for you. And then he says, be sober. Verse 9, 8. Be vigilant, because your adversary... Now, what is an adversary? Well, if you go to court, an adversary is the one that's accusing you. Okay? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, the Bible doesn't say he's a roaring lion. It says he makes... He comes on the scene like he's a roaring lion, but he's not. He walks about like he is a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So he can't devour this anybody. He's seeking that weak one, that one that's not close to God, that one that does not have God's Holy Spirit. The Bible says what to do about it. Verse 9, Whom steadfast resist, in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. <laughs> you see, your brothers and sisters who don't have God's Holy Spirit is going to get eat up by the devil. The devil's going to destroy them. He's at work everywhere. Everywhere we look today. And we only have a little bit of time left. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Now therefore you need to make up your mind this morning. Are you concentrating on heaven, or are you concentrating on the world? Because he says rejoice you heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Now is he talking to people in heaven, or talking to people that's living here right now? But their mind is on heavenly things. You see? Now think about that. And then he goes on to say, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. 
all those people that's living on the earth and they're not thinking about what's happening in heaven. They're getting away from church. They're doing all these other things they're doing because the church has failed them. The church has given them lies, deceits, and all sorts of things all through the years. And now people's looking around. Well, what's truth? I just want the truth. Why can't you people just tell me the truth? They can't because the truth is not in them. They had the Word of God, but they perverted it. He says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused him them before our God day and night. If you go back to the message I did on uh, this year on uh, April the 29th, the destroyer has come. You will see how the devil is working in the music industry today. How he used this woman called Carrie as she sings, Jesus, take the wheel. But I asked, does she even know him? <laughs> if you watched any of her videos, does she even know who Jesus is? The way she's dressed up and acting. And I got one more thing to add in this message this morning. Pick up a copy of the book I published through Author House. Now, I published this book in 2011, and it's entitled Eurocladon Y2K12, Man of Sin. Now, I outline things that you're seeing going on in this world today, right now. It had not happened yet. They're in that book. If you don't believe what I'm saying, get a copy of it and read it, and you'll see and right here in America, you're going to see what's coming right now is spot on. If you want to know what's fixing to happen, it's in here. It's coming. If you go on your internet and browser and you type in my name, Methuselah Shema, you won't have any trouble finding my book, Eurachlodon, Y2K12, Man of Sin. Think about all the questions that you might have and look at what is going on in our society. Now this book was written 13 years ago or 12 years ago <laughs> and I've outlined all the mess that you're seeing out there right now and what's fixing to happen. It's there. Prophecy. Now it took me more than just 2011 to write that book. God had me working on that book for 15 or 20 years prior to putting it out there. And some of that stuff has <laughs> really been a long time then when you look at it. And yet it's spot on. Now you think about it. What I'm preaching up here today, and I'm trying to tell you up here today, if you don't do something, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, buts about it. I'm sorry, but you're going to hell. You fall in these worldly churches, you on your way to hell. Bear this in mind. This book may be a bit deep for some people. And some of you may have a hard time with parts of it. It's kind of like when you go out and you order fish. And you go to eat the fish and all of a sudden, oh! And there's a bone in it. Well, don't throw that bone away. Just lay it aside somewhere there. They might be too hard for you right now. But you might find out later. <laughs> Look at there. That really holds true with the rest of this. So some of it's probably going to be hard for you to take. 99% of it's in parables. <laughs> and Jesus spoke a parable. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 34. Oh, you'll know this is of God because it is in parables. All these things spoke Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spoke he not to them. And so all the words that the Bible spoke are spoken in parables by Jesus. That it might go be fulfilled, verse 35 in Matthew 13 which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, 
I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. You're going to have to have God's Spirit to understand a lot of this stuff. And a lot of these things that are happening in the world today, you're going to see. Oh, maybe you think this is the way it should be, and they just want their rights, and this wants that, and that wants this. As you read in my book, I show many things that's already happened and soon will come to be. Oh, you can see yourself. And so after reading it, you may be able to understand who this man of sin is. And uh, the thing is, everybody was looking for the end of the world and a climax to all of it. And the churches were full of people and such going on. Because they thought the end of the world was coming, and I plainly said it wasn't. They said in 2000, they said Y2K, that was going to be the end of the world. And I was already preaching it wasn't. Because the end is not yet. There's some other things that have to happen first. And there's still a few more things that needs to happen. This book was published in 2011. And quite a few years into writing. The devil is working round the clock today to corrupt people with a worthless version of the gospel. This gospel that's being preached in these churches today is worthless. People's not getting the truth of God. They're getting a lie formulated by the devil that's living in their church. Period. Where Satan's seed is. Right where Satan lives. Where he dwelleth. It may sound good to many, and it may even look good to some. And a lot of them will tell you that it feels good. But is it good for your eternal destiny? No. We see the devil at work today, like the New International Version, published by Harper College. You know who, what other books Harper College um, um, Collins also publishes? Well, one, they publish the Satanic Bible. <laughs> so, that ought to tell you something. They also publish the Joy of Gay Sex. Now, these are a company that publishes the Bible. Oh, well, not the Bible, the New International Version of the Bible. And what have they perverted? Well, about, I'd say, around 64,000 changes that they've made in the King James Version. And does it uh, any big deal about what they've changed? Well, if we read in our Bible, bring it up on the screen please, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 6. It says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now Jesus didn't think it was robbery to be equal with God, according to that verse. Now, the... Uh, one of these other versions. Let's take a look at what we got over there. You see, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now go to one of the other versions, up there, Marie. Uh, yeah, try that one. What does that say? Who existing in the form of God didn't consider equality with God a thing to be grasped. That's just the backwards, isn't it? Yeah. Just the opposite. But what the NIV says, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Pretty much like that one there then, huh? Perversions. Not versions, but perversions. And we drop down to Romans chapter 1, verse 20. <clears throat> that one was totally backwards from the King James. But look at uh, Romans 1 and verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In their perversion... In Romans chapter 1 and verse 20 of the NIV, it says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, 
being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Where's the Godhead at? Where's Jesus at? You see, there ain't no Jesus here, is there? Because there's no God the Father, no God the Son, and no God the Holy Spirit. They have taken the Godhead out of this verse. And that makes it easier to understand? Really? Does removing the Trinity? Well, what do they do with Genesis chapter 1, verse 26? And God said, let us make man in our image. Who is the us that he's talking about? Let us make man in our image. Who is that same one he's talking about then? If they have removed the Trinity in Romans 1, 20, what have they done with Genesis chapter 1, verse 26? Let us make man in our image. There's the Trinity right there in Genesis chapter 1. And in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus here is speaking in verse 19. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. There's your Trinity again that they have disavowed and removed from God's Holy Word. You think these preachers are preaching the truth out of this junk? These perversions? They have perverted the Word of God. The devil is in the details. A lot of men say that. <coughs> and we can see that homosexuals, Christ rejectors, God haters, they're all right there with them as they publish this kind of garbage. And what do they do? They run right out and buy them a copy. And most of our children today have witnessed hundreds of thousands of murders, rapes, adulteries, fornications, thefts, and every other form of smut that you can understand or think about on television before the time that they're 10 years old. And we wonder why we got so many drive-by shootings and so many senseless killings going on. Just turn on that evil eye and you'll see it. There's so many false prophets today. Disneyland is in a conflict right now with the governor of the state of Florida because Disney is using the devil as their god. And they're promoting lasciviousness, homosexuality, godlessness, and they're angry with DeSantis because he will not permit their full reign upon the people in his state. He's resisting this devilish movement going on down there at Disney World right now. And if you're planning on going down there to Disney World, know what's facing you. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man's coming to the Father but by me. In Luke 22, verse 31, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired you to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. And what, do, what does that mean? Well, it means like if you take wheat and it comes into a threshing floor and you put it in here and you beat it and beat it and beat it and throw it up in the air. The chaff blows away and the wheat goes to the ground. And that's what the devil is trying to do to you. He's trying to beat all the good out of you. He's trying to beat all the good out of you and bury you in the ground. That's what he's trying to do. Sift you that he could use you and make you into what he wants you to be. Or else, how can you really study evolution? Because evolution cannot legitimately be called a science. But yet they do it anyway. And why can't it be called legitimately a science? Because the truth is, before 4000 BC, everything they have goes blank. All they can use is, oh, well, we have this way of testing and dating. 
The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than the two-edged sword. Our children are being taught that to believe that life means very little. Evolution teaches them life doesn't mean anything because we're just blobs from something that crawled out of the ocean. There is no God, so why not go ahead and go on a killing spree? It's, it'll give you something to do someday. And then if you're dead, so what? You're going to be dead someday anyway. But what happens when they get caught? And they don't get killed in the conflict. And they live to spend their life in prison. Who gains anything? Who gets anything out of it but the devil? Any religion that adds to or takes away from the Word of God is of the devil. The seven sacraments of the Catholic Church or saying like the Church of Christ says you have to be baptized to be saved. Or saying like the Seven Day Adventist says you have to be baptized into their church in order to be saved. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 and we're going to close here now we're running out of time. From that time Jesus began to preach and say when Jesus began to preach he said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance is a change of mind not something else. Jesus paid for our sin. And He is our gift from God. But the God of this world has blinded the minds of the men that believe not. 1 Corinthians 10.26 tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It doesn't belong to the devil. He's got people thinking it belongs to Him. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now I'm going to ask you, before we close now, will you join God in heaven or will you be going someplace else? You don't have to go to hell. You go there because that's what you're choosing to do. Hell is a choice. Don't make the wrong choice on eternity. Choose God and live. Become a child of God today and you'll be able to see what the devil is doing today. You'll be able to discern through all his lies and mistruths. And all the injustices that he's causing upon our world today. Join with God. And know the true form and the true way of being forgiven. To be forgiven by God and to know his forgiveness. It passes all understanding. Think about where you're at now and where you could be. Thank you. Won't you come to the altar? In Jesus' name, amen.